This is an introduction to machine level architecture. Uh, this appears on Comp2 on AS Computing. As we've previously looked at, some of the internal components of a computer system are the processor, main memory, which may consist of RAM, ROM, or EEPROM, I.O. controllers, and buses. Those internal components are grouped together into what we call the CPU. Within terms of computing, when we refer to the CPU, we mean these internal components, basically those that appear on the motherboard. The CPU groups together these, whereas what we often know as the central processor unit, the microprocessor, we're just going to call the processor. External components of a computer system, also known as peripherals, could be keyboard, mouse, printer, disk drives, I.O. devices, I.O. ports and secondary storage. One of the things that have been looked at before is the idea of a free box model. So this represents a computer system as laid out by Jean von Neumann in 1945. This shows that there is a processor, a main memory, and an input output all linked together by what's known as a system bus. Now computer memory we talk about primary memory, primary storage. Computer memory is the concept that data is put into different memory addresses just like pigeonholes. So each data location is given an address and within that data location you may store for instance one byte of data. So this represents memory with the memory address given the location of the data that is stored in memory. Remembering back to when we looked at memory also as well as data instructions are stored in memory. The system bus then let's remind ourselves the system bus is what connects each of the three boxes together the processor the main memory, the input output. To define a bus, a bus is a set of parallel wires that connect two or more independent components of a computer system. And buses pass signals between the components. Note, not data, they pass signals. The system bus is split into three separate buses. The data bus, the address bus and the control bus. So we know now that a bus is a set of parallel wires that connect two or more independent components of a computer system, that buses pass signals between them and that the system bus can be further split into the data, the address and the control bus. Here is a simplified diagram of a computer system which represents the three buses connecting different internal components. We can see here this box represents the central processing unit. With inside this box is the processor, the main memory, sometimes known as the IAS, a media access store, the buses connecting these together and I.O. controllers an input controller to get data from the peripheral device of a keyboard an output controller to give output to a visual display unit and an I.O. controller for input and output to secondary storage for example a magnetic hard disk you may want to pause this video for a moment and just consider the diagram for a few minutes. One of the things that I'm mentioning here are the I.O. controllers. 
the input controller, the output controller, the I.O. controller. Peripheral devices are not connected directly to the processor. They are not part of the CPU. We saw that from the diagram. Keyboard is a peripheral, secondary storage it gives us our hard disk drive, visual display unit. They are devices external to the main CPU. They're not directly connected to the processor. So therefore they must have an I.O. device controller. This allows input and output from that device. The controller is an electric circuit board which consists of an interface, a set of data commands and small areas of memory called registers known as status registers and the electronics are appropriate for sending control signals to the device connected to the computer. It allows an interface to enable the device to be plugged in. These days we most commonly use USB ports to plug peripheral devices in. Now an I.O. port is simply a set of data command and status registers and registers are storage locations that we can read from and written to. So the processor exchanges data with a peripheral device through part of an I.O. controller and that's called the I.O. port. Here's another diagram of the bus structure. There are three buses here a control bus, an address bus and a data bus. The data bus carries data and instructions and is bi-directional. It carries data in two ways. The processor receives data from the data bus and receives instructions from the data bus but the processor may also put data and instructions onto the data bus. The keyboard controller is an input device therefore it puts data onto the data bus. Main memory, data and instructions can be read from the data bus and can also be placed on the data bus hence it's bi-directional. A VDU is an output device so this will take data off the data bus and a magnetic disk controller links in with our hard disk drive our secondary storage therefore we can read and write to our hard disk drive so that is the two way to our data bus. The address bus carries the memory location or the address of the data that we want to read. The processor is the only component to generate an address the address is unidirectional and every device will access the address bus in order to be able to look at where it gets its data from. Hence going back to this example this memory address would travel along the address bus the data would travel back along the data bus. The control bus is bi-directional with every component. The control bus sends out control signals. These indicate are we reading or writing from main memory? Are we reading or writing from magnetic disk controller? They are two examples of signals. Looking at this diagram here, this shows a more simple explanation of our microprocessor. Our microprocessor is linked with an electronic clock. The electronic clock ticks 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. The control bus may indicate read, write, read, write on each tick of the clock. The processor, when we want to read, it might transfer an address of where we're reading from along the address bus and main memory sends the data back along the data bus. If the processor does some calculation to the data, 
then the control bus may send write signal to memory an address of where we write that location is sent along the address bus and the microprocessor sends the data back to memory to be stored so that is how it operates the clock then an electronic system that produces a train of binary pulses and it keeps everything synchronized one pulse is used to fetch and decode an instruction from memory the next is used to execute it it may take more than one pulse to execute large instructions when we need to read from or write to memory or any secondary storage there are two different systems the data bus which is a system of wires along which data and instructions flow through the CPU and next we tell the memory which memory address is to be used and the memory address is sent along the address bus so that is the memory location address bus carries address locations to memory or an IO controller from the processor it is unidirectional data bus carries data to memory or an IO controller bidirectional width determines the overall system performance the control bus, bus transmits command timings and specific status information two we've already mentioned memory read, read, memory write you could also have clock signal, reset signal in summary we have looked at the internal components of a computer system we looked at the basics of machine level architecture we've looked that a computer is made up of internal components that are classified as the CPU we've defined that the computer is broken into a free box model where a system bus links the different internal components of a computer system where a system bus is a set of parallel wires connecting two or more independent components of a computer system the system bus being split into a data address and control bus and we looked how these buses work together there's also been some discussion on IO controllers